Across Africa, young women are excluded from decision-making that affects their daily lives. Male-dominated political institutions are part of the problem, but young women also face economic barriers, social norms, and gender biases that hold them back from rising to political leadership positions in their communities. Nous constituons plus de la moitié de la population en Guinée. Nous sommes une force de production, nous sommes une force dynamique, nous sommes une force économique. Comment voulez-vous amputer ce pays de sa moitié, de plus de sa moitié, et pour dire qu'on a un développement durable, équilibré? On ne peut pas l'avoir sans les femmes. Even though Liberians elected the first woman head of state in Africa, in the Mano River region, which includes Côte d'Ivoire, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, women's representation in political leadership lags compared to gains elsewhere in Africa. What will it take to overcome these barriers and biases to create opportunities for young women to compete for leadership positions and become dynamic agents of change in their community? Tapping into the vibrant and dynamic populations of young women in the Mano River region, the National Democratic Institute partnered with the Mano River Union to launch the inaugural Emerging Women's Political Leadership Initiative. Through an open and rigorous application process, NDI recruited 32 diverse young women with an interest in political and civic leadership from the four countries in the region to take part in the academy, leveraging their own solidarity the participants immediately created the Network of Emerging Women in Politics, or New Politics. This program will help me to achieve my aspiration by being more confident into fighting for public office within my country. Taking their first steps on their journey, in February 2020, the new leaders arrived in Monrovia, Liberia, to participate in a week-long boot camp which laid the foundations for the momentum of the whole academy. This marks the beginning of a year-long experience of learning, building bonds, and engaging with established women leaders from across the African continent and beyond. The present ceremony axes sur le leadership for the promotion of the cause of women and women in the sphere of politics of our country arrive à un moment précis de l'histoire du pays où on assiste à un renouvellement de notre classe politique. Ma motivation au programme du réseau des femmes émergentes en politique vient du constat de l'absence de la participation publique et politique des jeunes filles en Côte d'Ivoire. On arrival, the new leaders from Côte d'Ivoire, Guinée and Sierra Leone were met with an enthusiastic welcome from their Liberian peers and fellow academicians. I wanted to gain more techniques, know how, how to apply them during my campaign and how to also disseminate my message as somebody who is visually impaired. Getting down to work, participants got to know each other by sharing testimonies of their personal journeys, challenges and triumphs in becoming political leaders. Many described the struggle to step into the very male-dominated world of politics in their countries. During my elections, I had an incident of elections violence, and I think if I had had this training before and knew the different risks, I would have been able to take precautionary methods to ensure that I am not in harm's way or I do not put my supporters in harm's way. The boot camp also provided epic moments of connection between participants. Definitely, one of the highlights was a surprise visit by former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who many of the new leaders had already identified as their political role model. The journey to leadership is long. Uh, le chemin vers le leadership is vraiment long. Or most times, a long one. President Johnson Sirleaf's message to them was that while she had been the first, the groundwork has been laid so that she is not the last in terms of women's executive leadership in the region. We need to set aside and stop thinking about what the society have already expects for women, that women should be in the kitchen. We need to take active part to take part in um, forming these policies. At NDI, we often talk about the importance of capacity, confidence, and connections in supporting the talent pool of young women in political leadership. The boot camp gave this group of young women with similar aspirations and ambitions an opportunity to build bonds of solidarity 
between a group of peers that will continue to provide them with the confidence and connections to pursue their political leadership dreams. These young leaders come from many and different walks of life, but they have a common purpose to become knowledgeable leaders, challenge existing stereotypes, and bring more women into decision-making roles, as reflected in their new mantra. More women, better politics. Better politics, more women. They left the boot camp feeling empowered and even more determined to change the face of politics and leadership back home and in the region. Candidate for this series of formation and leadership feminine. Donc c'était une opportunité, comme je l'ai dit, de pouvoir suivre cette formation et d'acquérir des connaissances qui pourraient nous aider dans nos objectifs politiques. Despite challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, new politics fellows remained engaged through a series of virtual networking sessions and advanced training modules, which included hearing firsthand from other women leaders about their experiences in politics. Dans le monde d'aujourd'hui, avec les médias sociaux, on a l'impression que les gens cherchent à être leaders pour eux-mêmes. Mais un leader, ce n'est pas d'abord pour soi-même. On n'est pas leader pour soi. C'est la première leçon que je tire de mon parcours. The year flew by, and at the end of it, our new politics fellows shared stories of their growth over the course of the program and celebrated their achievements with their mentors and political party leaders during graduation ceremonies. As the chair of the National Democratic Institute, I would like to wish you all warm congratulations. You must strive to lift each other up and raise each other's voices. And I wish you success in your journeys. Part of the sustaining power of the New Politics Initiative is the ability of the fellows to remain engaged in the future through its social media platforms. Remember, confidence and connections. Participants continue to share their successes rely on each other as they run for office and carry out advocacy campaigns together. In its inaugural year, members of the New Politics Network demonstrated their commitment to political activism and changing politics in their communities. For example, in Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia and Sierra Leone, they assisted community members affected by COVID-19. And of course, as young women in political leadership in all four countries, they advocated for gender parity and youth inclusion in politics. I want to say thanks to NTR family and the new partners for coordinating such a wonderful program. In the years to come, NDI, the Malo River Union, and this first cohort of young women will strengthen the new politics brand by recruiting new participants and deepening the pool of talent in a regional network of confident young women committed to using their leadership to change the face of politics.